Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is iryeni, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, and then you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome back to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 157 now, guys. I've picked out five new mods for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. So let's just jump straight into it. Starting off at our number five spot, we have the Silt Striders Mahal Monsters and Animals mod. Now already recognizing the Mahal Monsters and Animals part, you know if you've been a fan of this series for a while that I absolutely love the Mahal Monsters and Animals series. All the mods featured under the Mahal Monsters and Animals category are just always amazing and I always find them to be so fun to play with and find in game and this one adds silt striders into the game now a little bit of background if you don't know what a silt strider is is a silt strider is a gargantuan docile arthropods that are native to Morrowind they have stilt light legs and a body resembling the curved and armored body of a flea now if you've played Morrowind in the past you definitely know what a silt strider is because they were primarily used as a means of transportation in this elaborate network stretching between various cities on the island of Vardenfell and Morrowind this mod aims to bring the Silt Striders back into Soul Slime, but they're not in large numbers anymore because the Silt Striders survived the Ash Blight that exterminated many of Vardenfell's native creatures. Their numbers would, however, dwindle due to the coming Red Year when the eruption of the Red Mountain killed most of them in Vardenfell and destroyed their native habitat on the island. Despite that, they're still pretty common on the mainland. Now in the vanilla game, you can also talk to Reva Servani, who's the owner of the only tamed Silt Strider in the game, and he mentions that the Silt Strider cocoons are extremely tough, and that they're very rare nowadays. But you actually can stumble across Silt Striders in-game now, and they're a new ambient creature, and they have new sounds and behaviors, so I feel like your Soul Slime experience will be greatly enhanced with giant creatures roaming around the lands, especially whenever they're Silt Striders, and being a fan of Morrowind myself, I definitely love to see them added into Skyrim again. And with this mod being very small, coming in at 2.84 megabytes, it's a mod that can fit perfectly into your load order with no issues at all. And that's definitely why it comes in at our number 5 spot, so I'd recommend downloading the Silt Striders Mahale Monsters and Animals mod. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have Griffin's Refuge, Hidden Home the Radiant Raiment. This is a player home that's hidden just beneath the Radiant Raiment in Solitude. And the mod page reads that in the Radiant Raiment, the High Elven sisters Terry and Anderi rush you below into the basement, hidden behind a chamber. You'll be safe here, they say. They'll never find you. It may take weeks, months, or even years before they give up on the hunt, but until then, you'll have refuge with us, in the secret chambers beyond our storage room. It's in our basement, a hidden chamber within our clothing storage. It used to be a guest suite, but we've had it renovated. You'll find a workroom, shelves for books, and even a bath to relax and pass the time. We have many different outfits here at the Radiant Raiment, but should you need a disguise, you surely can find one in our basement. There's monks, merchant, baker, blacksmith, college mage, there's tons of options whenever it comes to needing a disguise. You all hear the sounds of footsteps above, elven plate boots on wood. The sisters hastily shut the secret entrance before composing themselves to deceive the Thalmor. So if you're playing a character who is running from the Thalmor, especially after charging the Thalmor Embassy, then this is definitely a perfect player home for you because you can just hide in solitude in the Radiant Raiment and never be found. So as you can see, there's plenty of room down here that is stored away in a secret entrance so that you'll never be found if you're playing a character who's on the run from something. And with there also being so many different outfits available, so if you need a disguise, you can just dress up as anyone that you want and walk straight out a free man. This is definitely a player home that is great for runaway assassins, thieves, and anyone that is on the run from something, such as the Thalmor. And with this mod being very small in space and very compatible with other mods, it's definitely a mod that I would recommend if you're doing a thief or an assassin character. And that's definitely why this mod comes in at our number 4 spot, so I'd recommend downloading Griffin's Refuge. Coming in at our number 3 spot, we have the Kagaudi, Mahale Monsters and Animals. Now I know I'm featuring another Mahale Monsters and Animals mod, and also another one that is featured only in Soul Slime, but I feel like I never cover animals or even any mod that features anything outside of Skyrim. It's always inside of Skyrim, I never really travel to Soul Slime, really ever. So I wanted to cover some mods that are featured in Soul Slime, just in case some of you guys that really like to go out there, they'll have something to actually experience as well. And I really like these creatures as well, these Kagaudi are large, two-legged horned apex predators. They first appeared in Elder Scrolls 3 and later on in Elder Scrolls Online. Some of these variants are also found in Shadowfen. 
Kagata usually live alone or in small hunting groups. They gather in larging groups only for mating seasons, but at these times the females can be observed as a dominant sex. During that season, they act really aggressive and are known as mating kagaudis. Now, the kagaudi have a very complex and interesting vocalization system. They use different calls for mating, for territorial disputes, or in battling. And despite being much more aggressive than guars, Dunmers used to tame them as mounts. In Solstheim, the Marag Tong used to feed a group of Kagaudis outside of the Ashfell Citadel to use them as guard dogs. And they actually do their job pretty well, since when they see their prey, a Kagaudi will charge at them furiously, attacking with their long head horns and big mouths filled with sharp teeth. They are also vectors of the yellow tick, which is a weak disease that affects your stamina regeneration. But how these creatures actually arrived in Solstheim is unknown, maybe brought by Reavers or by the Marag Tong themselves. This mod features the Kagaudi in two different variants. There's the common and the mating Kagaudi, which is a stronger variant. And they also have custom behavior, loot, and sounds. There's a new disease called Yellow Tick, a new item called the Kagaudi Hide. And this just makes your soul slime more alive and provides you with more lore from the Elder Scrolls Online and Morrowind. And like I said, I'm a huge fan of Morrowind. So anytime they bring back creatures from Morrowind into Skyrim, I definitely have to download them and check them out and show you guys. So if you're someone who travels to soul slime a lot and you're looking for new creatures or enemies to encounter, then the the Kagaudi mod is definitely one worth checking out, and that's definitely why it comes in at our number 3 spot, so I'd recommend downloading the Kagaudi Mahale Monsters and Animals mod. Coming in at our number 2 spot, we have Inferno, the fire effects redo. Now the mod page reads, are you tired of all the puny vanilla flames and want those amazing fire effects from the original Ultimate HD fire effects mod? Well this is what that mod actually does. It changes all of the fire effects in the game, for example there's spells, fireplaces, campfires, brazers, torches, candles, creatures fire attacks, etc. It's a complete rework of meshes to properly apply visual effects, and these are high resolution textures for effects and gradients. There's a new flame glow, color, size, and tile options, as well as built-in support for other popular mods. Now, not only are the fire effects redone in the game, but also the smoking effects as well, such as the smoking torches and candles have been altered to have visual smoke effects for torches used by the player and NPCs as well. And in my personal opinion, I feel like this is what Skyrim needed, a fire effects redo that completely does everything in terms of fire damage and just the smoking candles and torches, as I said. I feel like this was all needed because all of the fire effects in the game are outdated. You know, it's not Bethesda's fault or anything like that. The game was created back in 2011, but having a nice little update to all the fire effects in the game is definitely something that the game needed, and it fits perfectly. As you can see, as I'm roaming around and showing you all of these new retextures for fire, they look amazing, especially the flame spell as well. I love the flame spell, and it's probably going to make me dive into the destruction skill tree into the flames category more than any other category now, just because of how great it looks. Although the mod is really big in size, coming in at 137 megabytes, I do feel Feel like it's worth it if you have enough space in your load order, and especially if you have a mage character who uses fire spells, this is going to completely give you a new experience with it. And that's definitely why the Inferno Fire Effects Redo comes in at our number 2 spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading it and trying it out for yourself. Coming in at our number one spot, we have the Xbox Animal Overhaul. Now this mod is absolutely huge, and it's a porter's choice merging many of the Mahale Monsters and Animals mods, the Farm Animals mod, and updated Sheep Models mod, all jammed together into one overhaul. All of these animals in the mod are hand placed in the world, and it doesn't touch the vanilla animals, so it should be compatible with any other retexture or animal behavior mods that you have. The Xbox Animal Overhaul is best described as a way of adding a vast amount of new wildlife to the icy wonderland of Skyrim, with new varieties of deer that now roam the land and are unique to each region, small critters such as raccoons, squirrels, weasels, and even skunks wander the wilds, and new predators to watch out for, such as mountain lions that travel through the mountainous regions, boars and wild pigs that can be found in the wild now, as well as their domesticated cousins in farms and villages. You can also now find a variety of seals among the shores of Skyrim and Solstheim, and even killer whales looking to prey on them in nearby waters. You can find manatees along Skyrim's lakes and larger sea cows in the depths of Skyrim seas. There's also varieties of woolly rhinos that now roam the tundra, as well as herds of oxen roaming the lands. You'll find a new variety of domesticated critters inhabiting Skyrim's towns and hamlets, including house cats. There's also sheep herders with their trusty shepherd dogs that can now be found on the roads of Skyrim with their sheep herds, and bandits now have vicious pet mastiffs to help them with their raiding. And undead variants of the pups can now be found scoured among Skyrim's dungeons. We also have giant bats that can be found throughout Skyrim's caves and dungeons, and a variety 
variety of birds that can be found throughout the land. We have ducks, geese, and turkeys, and also chub loons on Skyrim's coasts, so you won't be able to travel far without coming across some kind of new critter. I think this mod is absolutely perfect for those who want an animal overhaul and want some new animals into the game. Without having to go out and search for each separate animal to add separately, it can all just now be in one mod, and that's the Xbox Animal Overhaul. And it is very large, coming in at 308.03 megabytes, but having it all in one mod just makes it so much easier and gives you way more room for other mods that it's almost impossible to pass up a mod like this. And that's definitely why it comes in at our number one spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Xbox Animal Overhaul mod. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future Top 5 Mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description, and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions for there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I will talk to you guys later.